Hey, what you guys doing here? Guys, come inside. What's that, Caleb? Breakfast. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh. Oh, man, right on. <laughs> hey, since you guys here, let's jam, man. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is Lorene, and during the stay-at-home order, I bet you expect me to say that I stay at home and watch Korean dramas all day. Well, I do do some of that, but not all day. I'm working on a Christmas cross-stitch stocking for our granddaughter. I missed her first Christmas last year, so I hope to get it done this year. I walk Jack for exercise every day, and I find that I'm cooking a lot more than I used to. I also try to do one thing every day that I don't normally do, like not my weekly chores or my daily cleaning. Otherwise, since Dean and Nick are essential workers and Liam is home with his mom because she works at a school, I'm just home by myself being bored. And that's it. So take care. Hope we get to see each other soon and keep washing those hands. Hey, we wanted to welcome you to our living room this morning. You know, and I know that things have uh, been a bit crazy and our normal routines have been uh, somewhat disrupted. Uh, but the one thing that hasn't changed is the fact that we can put our hope in God you know we can worship him anytime any place anywhere you know whether or not we're with someone else or by ourselves you know we can still do those things you know this morning uh, we wanted to invite you to spend some time with our family my wife Jan our daughters Rin and, and Risa who's actually doing the, the video in this morning uh, you know to take a look at God's Word what it has to say to us uh, so as we dive right in this morning, uh, I want us to, to take a look at the 42nd Psalm and, and, and Rin will, will read that for us. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people <clears throat> say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God, under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Now this psalm, it, it, it paints a picture of where David, uh, who most scholars uh, believe uh, is the author of this, uh, this psalm, you know, it, it paints a picture of where he's at. You know, but also lays out a roadmap to where you know, David wants to be, you know, which is in the presence of God. You know, last week we shared about, uh, you know, about a lot of what, what had happened in the past several weeks, you know, and a lot of things had happened. Uh, but little did we know later that day that those changes that we talked about, you know, would be considered minor inconveniences compared to the new normal for this upcoming month. Life and, and circumstances around us are changing rapidly. And, and for many of us, you know, it, it's been a rough transition. And my guess is because for, for many of us, we went from yesterday's normalcy to the social distancing and then some of today, you know. And so when we, we take a look at these, uh, these five verses of this psalm, it can come across as a, a bit depressing, but, but it's an honest look at where, where David is at. And, and it illustrates a journey that, that David takes us on. You know, this journey from, from isolation to the doorsteps of spiritual intimacy with God. You know, so I want us to kind of, kind of walk through this. <clears throat> you know, and, and let's take a look at the first two verses 
which say this, you know, as a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You know, the deer in this, this psalm, which is David, is panting for water because he's, he's thirsty. You know, there's this, this absence of, of something that he needs, he desperately needs. And that need is coming from the depths of his, his soul, his innermost being. That need is God. And I think for, for many of us, we can relate to this. You know, we thirst for things, but, but we may not always understand what it is that we're thirsting for, or rather, what, what it is that's missing from our lives. Here, David, he gets it. You know, he, he says these words again, you know, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You know, in this time of, of, of social distancing, you know, I guess the question to ask ourselves is, what is it that we're thirsting for? But as David continues, I want us to take a look at the, the next verse, <clears throat> which is verse 3, and, and it says this, You know, my tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? In this verse, we see this, this sense of, of sadness. You know, you know he, in David here, he's crying, and, and it isn't just a regular type of crying. You know, it's uncontrollable. He's crying all the time, day and night. And instead of taking care of, of himself, sustaining himself, eating or, or sleeping or, or whatever, there's just tears because of his sadness. You know, today we call that depression where we don't know why we feel the way we feel. We don't know why things are the way they are. And we cannot control those feelings. But here, for David... You know, the reason he's going through this is because there's the absence of the presence of God in his life. He's feeling isolated, alone, and he can't control the way he's feeling. You know, some of us may be feeling this way. You know, and, and, and it's okay to be honest about it because it's real. And, and, and in the next couple of verses, we'll, we'll get a glimpse of, of David's response to this. You know, let's take a look at the, the next verses. Verse 4, and I'll read that for us. It says this, These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praising among the festive throne. You know, here we still, you know, you know we see David who is still in this reminiscent stage. You know, he's remembering how it used to be, how worship used to be. You know, when, when he went to the temple, to the house of God, he remembers how church used to be. When that was sort of an option in his life, when that was something he was able to do. And his memories are extremely fond. I suspect many of us are thinking about how just several weeks ago we were worshiping under one roof as, as one body. And although though there are some limitations that were already set in place back then, we were able to physically go to the house of God, to, to church. And, and, and it was good because we could hear the person next to us singing. We could see their smile. We could experience human interaction, and it was good. But life is, is different now. Going to church is, is not an option. You know, how it used to be is no longer an option. But it ought not prevent us from worshiping God. And I think this is where, where David is, is going with this. You know, but, but as we kind of think about these things, these perhaps rather not so uplifting things, you know, how do you think the, the psalm relates to you? You know, how do you guys think? Okay, well, um, you know, you gave us this Psalm 42 uh, ahead of time to look at. So we had a little family meeting while you were gone, and we kind of all agreed that it's kind of depressing. So 
we felt like we needed to do something about that because that it was just too depressing. So, um, so we decided that you know we were going to turn on our Christmas lights and um, just add a little bit of cheer. And uh, this isn't something that we came up with on our own. This is um, I you know I read an article the other day about how people um, in uh, the mainland and in Europe have been starting to turn on their Christmas lights just because it feels like kind of a dark time um, right now. And, um, and so they've been kind of trying to just cheer, cheer other people up by turning on their Christmas lights. And in our house, if, if you didn't know, the last several years, we have not taken out any Christmas decorations. Our, our house is bare at Christmas. So these decorations have not been out for several years now and um, but but since we we're at home and we have time um, then we took out our decorations and we decorated this little tree that Sterling bought the other year this is the first time that this tree has ever been decorated um, and it just kind of made me think that um, you know I, I feel like that um, I'm not doing it just to like add cheer for the sake of adding cheer but you know that when I really stop and think about it that um, that during you know during this seemingly dark time that um, that you know I I have the light I I um, I know Jesus and I have a relationship with him and um, you know I need to let that light shine and so that um, I can share that with the rest of the world that doesn't know him and um that you know jesus jesus said that um he's the light of the world and that whoever um follows me will never walk in darkness and but will have the light of life and um so after this i plan to take this little tree upstairs and put it out in the window and um and i think that like you know maybe we'll have to bust out some more lights and um and especially especially with Easter coming up, I think that it's a good chance for us to um, you know let let our neighbors know because I'm sure that actually our neighbors are going to think, "Whoa, what's going on at that house because they never have lights on um, that you know if we have lights on now and um, that it can you know not only cheer them up but also I guess um, hopefully point them to Jesus being the light. Thanks. That was not a sincere thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I was thinking about the fact that uh, when I bought the tree, it looked much bigger in the box. But um, but I want to kind of take a look at, at, at verse 5 um, because it's here where David acknowledges how this journey to spiritual intimacy with God begins, you know, and, and, and so let me read that for us. Um, verse five says this, why my soul are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. You know, we read this, we get a glimpse into to what David was experiencing when, you know, perhaps, um, you know what was going on back then but but we you know may have experienced some of this in the past you know several weeks or we may have you know experienced it you know at a different time in life you know maybe right now we're we're a little bit bummed out feeling like we we don't have the freedom to come and go as we please you know in this case david he he really didn't have it all figured out he wasn't feeling uh suddenly better or or more holy in fact, I believe that these words are an indication that he realized that something was very, very wrong. And perhaps only God's presence in his life could, could make it right. And I think in, in recent weeks, many of us have uh, probably hovered around this area feeling isolated or, or alone. Uh, these words of David, they, they ought to serve as, as an encouragement 
that, that we're not alone, you know, that we're not isolated, that we can move from social distancing to spiritual intimacy with God. And we can do that from the living rooms of our very homes. The remedy to spiritual dehydration is to put our hope and trust in God, to intentionally spend time with Him, to rejoice in our relationship with Him and praise Him when times are, are good and, and even when they're not, simply because He's not only our Savior but our Lord. And, and, and to do this is to daily move from isolation and continue to take steps towards spiritual intimacy with God. You know, spending time with Him in His Word and in prayer, worshiping Him. And we can do this from our homes, you know, from our very living rooms. You know, there's another thing we can do. In fact, I, I want to challenge us to do this, you know, as a community of faith. You know, when we, like David, begin to understand where our hope comes from, I want us to share it. And we can do this from our own living rooms. We can do this with our families. But we can also reach out and encourage others. You know, shoot a text out to someone that God puts on your heart. Send an email or FaceTime someone or do a video chat. Or just check in and call someone. You see, the, the journey from isolation to spiritual intimacy begins when we put our hope in God but it continues through our obedience to God as we reach out and try and love on others let me close with these words you um, know which comes from David's psalm it says why my soul are you downcast why so disturbed within me put your hope in God for I will yet praise him my savior and my God, you know, let's close in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you just for uh, this time and this day. And, and Lord, the fact that we can worship you and we can, we can commune with you, we can, we can enter into a time of intimacy with you from our homes, from our living rooms, God. And so, Father, I pray that as, as this continues, uh, you know, life continues, that you would continue to watch over us. We pray for not only um, our families, our, our church, but our country and then some. You know, those who are uh, have fallen, um, you know, and have kind of gotten sick to this virus, we continue to ask for your healing hand on that. But we ask that you would be in control of all of these things, and we know so, God. But we continue to just lift it up, Lord, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Jesus has healed this
Thank you for joining us this morning um, and we want to let you know that uh, we will continue to keep you guys updated through our, our website and our social media pages on Instagram and Facebook. But we just wanted you to have a, a great week in the Lord and, and thanks again.